Google Wi-Fi was first released in December 2016, promising hassle-free performant Wi-Fi. When I first wrote this review back in January, we just upgraded from the ISP provided Wi-Fi combo router, which was decent enough in a small two bedroom apartment, but didn't really cut it in the longer and larger three bedroom apartment that we moved into. And now we've moved again, this time back to a smaller two bedroom apartment. So given my experience using Google Wi-Fi in a range of different scenarios, I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on how it stacks up. In the three bedroom apartment, we first experimented with a Netgear Wi-Fi router, but we had the same problem that we were having with the ISP provided router, which was despite paying for 50 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload, we would struggle to see even half of that. Down the end of the house where the bedroom was, uh, my phone or laptop would only show it was connected to Wi-Fi about half of the time. Even when it actually was connected, web pages would take ages to begin loading or not even load at all. Even closer to the Wi-Fi antennas, if I was on a video call, I could expect that call to drop several times every few minutes, which was incredibly frustrating. Enter Google Wi-Fi. I opted to go with the router and the point kit. This cost me $400 Australian and comes with the base station or router, which you plug your modem into, and then the point in which you place somewhere else in your house. Previously, Google Wi-Fi came in kits of three for the same price, but Google now says that the two pack will cover the same distance that the three pack used to cover. Both the router and the point support 802.11ac, n, b, g, and a Wi-Fi at both the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz spectrum. The router is the more powerful of the two pieces of hardware with slightly more memory and storage capacity. The router supports 4x4 MIMO for the 5 GHz band and 2x2 MIMO for the 2.4 GHz band, whereas the point only supports 2x2 MIMO across both bands. A quick interjection. Traditionally, Wi-Fi antennas can only talk to one device at a time. So if you have both your phone and your laptop connected to a traditional Wi-Fi router, the antenna quickly switches between your laptop and your phone, back to your laptop, back to your phone, to send data to both of them but at any one time, it can only actually be connected to the one device. MIMO stands for multiple input, multiple output, and shows how many devices your router can actually connect to at the same time. The higher the numbers, the more devices that are receiving data simultaneously. For example, the Google Nest router supports four by four MIMO, meaning it connect to four devices simultaneously. It would have been nice to see support for Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax, but supposedly the hardware isn't readily available or reliable yet, and I actually don't even have any Wi-Fi 6 devices yet, so it really would have just been a future-proofing upgrade. Physically, the router is slightly taller and has a slightly larger footprint, and it has two gigabit ethernet ports underneath for connecting to the internet and then passing through to another wired device. The point is slightly smaller and has no ethernet ports at all, although it does have what is essentially a Google Nest Mini built in, giving you a Google Assistant enabled speaker right in your Wi-Fi access point whereas the router doesn't have this. So the main trade-offs are the router is more performant when it comes to Wi-Fi, but the point has the bonus of working as a Google Assistant as well. The way a system like Google Nest Wi-Fi works is the pieces of hardware communicate in a mesh, covering your whole house in Wi-Fi instead of just relying on a single access point somewhere in a corner where your internet comes in. The idea being, instead of having one router with the antenna power cranked to the max and struggling to reach the remote corners of your house, you instead spread two or more Wi-Fi access points across your house. Instead of a single unit trying to cover the whole area, several pieces of hardware share the load, meaning their antenna strength doesn't need to be cranked up so high and your devices have a much more reliable time actually connecting to the internet and connecting to an access point that's much closer. The access points in your mesh system need to connect to each other. In my case, this was between the router and then the point. There are two ways of going about this. The first way and the easiest way is to simply plug in the router where your internet comes in and then connect it to the internet, obviously, and then set up the point one to two rooms away. And the access points will automatically pair with each other over Wi-Fi. This connects the two access points wirelessly, which requires no additional setup at all and is very, very straightforward. However, if the access points are too far away or there are a lot of other Wi-Fi devices around, they can be prone to interference and generally you'll always lose some speed between each additional access point. The way around this is via the second method, as I spoke about before, which is to hardwire each access point with an ethernet cable. This will result in almost no speed or signal loss between each access point and each subsequent access point will have almost the same speed as the main router. 
However, this isn't as easy to set up as it requires you to run ethernet between each of the points. If you already have ethernet cables ran through your house, this is probably the best option to go for. But for 95% of people, they just want to gonna plug in each of these devices, turn it on and hope for the best. And this is what Google is actually banking on by not providing any ethernet ports on the new Google Nest Wi-Fi point. With the previous generation of Google Wi-Fi Puck, each piece of hardware that you bought had ethernet ports. So if you wanted to, you had the option to hardwire everything for a more reliable network. However, Google has made a bet that people would rather a smaller and cheaper package instead of having ethernet ports. I'm personally totally on board with this, as like I said before, I think 99% of people using Google Wi-Fi just want a really easy to set up Wi-Fi experience, not have to run cables or plug in extra cords. If I recommend Google Wi-Fi to relatives, I know they aren't gonna be bothered to run cables. With that said, I know a lot of people were up in arms about the point not having any ethernet ports. There are two solutions. You can either buy additional routers instead of points, which are slightly more expensive, and then wire them up that way, or what you can do is intermingle the previous generation Google Wi-Fi pucks. Both solutions don't give you the Google Assistant built in, but this might not be important to you. But I digress. Setup was super easy, as you can see in this video up here. All I had to do was plug in the router into my internet connection and then plug the point halfway down the hallway into power, right in the middle of the house. I then downloaded the app, spent five minutes putting in a few configuration details such as what the Wi-Fi name and password are, and then waiting for those settings to provision to the router and the point. And boom, everything was up and running. The performance difference was immediately noticeable. I went to speedtest.net, one of my favorite websites, right next to the router, standing next to the router, and instantly I hit speeds that I'd never seen on either of the previous routers beforehand. I then walked down to the bedroom where I used to get very patchy Wi-Fi and had the full three bars the whole time, hitting nearly the exact same speeds that I was getting standing right next to the router, despite being way down the other end of the house. Jumping into the Google Wi-Fi app allows me to run a range of different speed tests. I can measure speed from any device on the network, I can measure speed between the router and the point, and I can actually measure the internet speed. Oh, and did I mention you can do this all from the cloud? I can install this at a relative's house and troubleshoot a specific device's speed within the network or without physically actually going to their house or actually even leaving my couch. Doing a speed test on the router itself, on average we got 46 megabits per second download and 17 megabits per second upload. Running a test between the router and the point, which are about 10 meters away, although they do have a direct line of sight, yielded a speed of 250 megabits per second, so over five times the maximum download speed we got anyway. Finally, running a test from my phone to the point, I got a speed of 445 megabits per second. So, a speed test from my phone to the first point, which is then wirelessly connected to the router, which then connects to the internet, got a speed of 47.5 megabits per second download and 16 megabits per second upload. So, we literally didn't lose any internet speed by being way down the other end of the house. This was awesome. I've actually since moved the Google Wi-Fi setup to my new two bedroom apartment, which I'm filming in right now. Being a much smaller and also more square shaped apartment, I opted to just put the router in the middle of the apartment and not even connect the point at all. At most, my devices are about one wall away from the router. And so I knew adding the additional point would actually give me the opposite effect. Instead of speeding up my Wi-Fi, the additional point would add congestion and potentially an unnecessary bottleneck if I connected to the point, which then had to bounce traffic to that router, even though they were super close to each other. At the new place, we've got a fiber connection offering a theoretical 100 megabits per second download and 40 megabits per second upload. Running a speed test, I consistently get about 93 megabits per second download and 33 megabits per second upload. Testing the Wi-Fi speed from my phone, even one room away from the router, I get a speed of 586 megabits per second, meaning my Wi-Fi connection is about five times the maximum speed of my internet connection. So no chance of it being the bottleneck here. Furthermore, I currently have about 20 clients connected to that one router with absolutely no signs of it slowing down yet. The only downside that I can think of here is experiencing a phenomenon called buffer blow. So what happens here is one device's latency or number of milliseconds it actually takes to connect to the internet or a site dramatically increases when another device on the network is also doing something that's relatively intense. This causes, for example, web pages on this device to take a long time to start loading when someone else here is uploading photos to Dropbox. So the solution to buffer bloat is by implementing something called quality of service or QoS which ensures that still capacity for you to load your web pages without one application or device taking up all the bandwidth. 
At the moment, Google Nest Wi-Fi doesn't implement anything like this, and you can find pages and pages of comments on their support forum complaining that, about this lack of functionali functionality. Basically, if your internet speed, particularly upload speed, is relatively slow, you might be better off using a different router which supports QoS. Moving on to the software, the app lets you drill down to specific devices to see their real-time usage or their historical usage. So for example, if you only had 200 gigabytes per month that you could use, you could see which exact devices used all that data for that particular month. From this screen, you can also prioritize devices speed for up to four hours. So if you're playing Xbox and want to ensure a lag-free experience, you can prioritize the Xbox to ensure you had the most direct and uninterrupted connection to the game servers while you're playing. Some other cool features that Google Nest Wi-Fi include, include WPA3, which is a new standard for securing your Wi-Fi network, Turning on a guest Wi-Fi network for creating a separate Wi-Fi network for your guests so that they can only access your internet and not all your other devices on the network. And also family pause, which lets you temporarily disable the internet, maybe to get like your kids to have dinner or something like that. So the only flaws with Google Nest Wi-Fi system, other than its slightly expensive price tag compared to traditional Wi-Fi routers, is that it doesn't support the latest standard of Wi-Fi, nor any form of QoS. The points don't have any Ethernet ports or 4x4 MIMO, and the router doesn't have Google Assistant built in. Overall, I'm super happy with Google Nest Wi-Fi. The hardware was super easy to install, setting it up with the app was quick and painless, and I'm now able to get really solid Wi-Fi across the whole house. I love the level of detail that the app gives you, even on a per device level, as well as the various speed tests you're able to run, all from anywhere in the world. Even though the price tag at $400 Australian is slightly steeper than what you'd normally pay for a traditional Wi-Fi router, I honestly can't recommend this system enough. With households getting more and more devices, I can only see traditional Wi-Fi routers slowly dying as 30, 40 or 50 devices all try and connect at once. If you're struggling with Wi-Fi dead spots or an intermittent connection, I'd strongly suggest picking up the Google Nest Wi-Fi system. The other scenario that's perfect for Google Nest Wi-Fi is for less technologically savvy relatives. The reliability of the hardware, the simplicity of the setup in the app, and the ability for you to log into the settings anywhere in the world to troubleshoot things if they're having troubles, make it perfect to just set up and leave. If their home's small enough, you could even just get by with buying just the router by itself, as I'm now using, at $270 Australian, and still get most of the benefits that I've described here. I honestly can't imagine needing to upgrade my Wi-Fi system for years to come. Thanks for watching this Technologetic review. If you enjoyed this look at Google Nest Wi-Fi, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below to Technologetic.